Hello, John here again, and welcome to another tutorial on the 6502 processor. In this week's tutorial, uh, we are just basically going to do a, an overview of the internal registers of the 6502. Um, this would this will conclude the uh, tutorials around the 6502 and its instruction set. So I just wanted to finish off with a small uh, video just to re-establish the, what the internal registers that we can use uh, are. So the internal registers uh, that are available to us is the program counter which is a 16-bit internal register and it's the only 16-bit internal register that is within the 6502. There's the X index register, with it, which is an 8-bit register. There is a Y uh, index register, which is another 8-bit register. We have the accumulator, and that's where you do all the mathematics and addition and subtraction. We have the status register, which keeps track of the state of the CPU, and it when you're running the instructions and we have the stack pointer and the stack pointer is still an 8-bit register but it actually is a 9-bit register because it's the ninth bit is fixed at, at, at 1 so the stack will always be at 0 1 x x in the memory in the memory space now the the status register as you know and we've talked about it meant a lot of uh, time when we're doing the instructions has a bit for each of its states, so it's uh, so it's a base. It's a it's a record, uh, not record, a, a, a current indicator of how the CPU is in what in what state. So we have the negative bit, which lets you know that the current state of the uh, of what the instruction did left it in a negative uh, state which in two com two's complement means that it's a negative number which means the most significant bit of the byte so in, ter in terms of a 8-bit number you have the seventh bit which is the most significant bit set to 1 which means it's a negative number or if it's 0 would mean a positive number in 2 complement and 2's complement is where you can have instead of in in um, in one's complement, which is the the eight bit byte would have a value of naught to two five five, in two's complement, the eight bit value is actually minus one twenty seven to plus one twenty eight. The next flag is the overflow flag, and that is linked to the two complement system as well. That it let that when if you have your um, if you have your accumulator at minus 128, which is um, which is the biggest, which is the biggest negative number you can have, and then you subtract some numbers on it, it should overflow because you can't have minus 129, minus 130. So it should actually overflow with the number closest to number closest to it. There is a bit that is never set at all and we ignore that because it's not linked to anything we have the bit that indicates whether the break command has been fired and we'll go into this in later tutorials when we uh, start coding um, for games and utilities and stuff like that we have the de decimal flag that changes the state of the CPU in some instructions mainly the arith arithmetic instructions to work in base 10 rather than base 2 we have the interrupt flag, which if it's set to 1 means the interrupt has been disabled, and if it's set to 0 means the interrupt is enabled. We also have the zero flag, and that, te that tells us whether the, CP the CPU or the instruction that has just been uh, executed has resulted in a zero state. Either it's um, equal to or not equal to, or zero or not zero depending on what the instruction was doing and then we've got the carry flag and that that normally is uh, used in the arithmetic where you add with carry subtract with carry and stuff like that and then you can also test on it 
it's all the carry flag has also resulted in com some comparisons uh, and we've talked about that when we're doing the branch if equal and branch if not equal and then we have a series of uh, commands that allow us to move data around these various uh, registers so as you can see we've got all the registers on there bar the program counter and the only reason I don't have the program counter on there is because the only register the only instructions that affect the program counter are a jump register a jump instruction or a go sub instruction so, I mean, we don't uh, physically affect it. It's just that we're telling the CPU to change the program counter to be at that point and then execute from that point. So we're not, phys well, I mean, people would say we are changing it, but we're only setting the program counter for um, execution. We can't add to it or delete. So as you can see, for the Y register, there are uh, load LDY and STY, so they're your load and store Y um, uh, commands. We can also transfer Y to the accumulator and then transfer the accumulator back into Y. And they're the only instructions that allow us to change, uh, move data around for the right Y register. Then we've got the accumulator, and of course we've got the the load and the store for memory. We've also, we can push the accumulator to the stack and pull the accumulator away from the stack, so that's PHA and PLA. We can transfer the accumulator into the Y and also transfer Y into the accumulator. And we can do the same with the X register. We can transfer the X register into the accumulator and we can transfer the accumulator into the X register. And with the X register, we can do the same with as the Y register is we can load and store from the accumulator so LDX and STX we can also move the X register into the accumulator and back and we can also move the stack pointer into the X register and the, st and the X register into the stack pointer so we can affect where the stack pointer is at any point in time and then we can put the uh, status register onto the stack and we can pull the status register from the stack so no matter what instruction we can do we can move any register to any part of the system so let's say that we had a memory location that had a uh, the contents of the status register from a previous routine we can load the accumulator with that memory point then push it onto the stack and then pull the st status register from the stack. So effectively, we could have memory that holds the state of the CPU, and we could force the state of the CPU from a memory location. So, and so we can m manipulate the data and move the data around the, s the CPU registers using these commands, and there is no way we can we can get lost effectively there are ways of put you know putting the stack pointer into the status register putting the stack pointer in memory putting the the the, the accumulator in memory or putting the accumulator into the status register we can do all that with all these instructions now with this being the final uh, to well the final tutorial in terms of language and and what all the commands can do I'm going to show you what we're going to do in future tutorials. Now, I was asked um, not far, not long after I'd done the first, the first video, which was the old, my overview of my uh, 6502 days and the Commodore days, where I was asked, "Am I going to talk about any of the programs that I wrote when I was flicking through the um, my my um, coding volumes?" Well, the answer to that is yes, but that is for a later video. So, with that, I will say, um, like me um, if you want, please subscribe, and in the next video, I'll show you some of my projects that I'm converting from the old way of doing it. So, with that, I will say good night. Take care. Bye.